Welcome to Americana Archives. Travel back in time with us as we go throughout America's historic newspapers to find the lost and forgotten history of America. Today's story brings us to the great state of Rhode Island. Being reported in the Bristol Phoenix of December 24, 1881. Today's headline is The Free Kings. It says, There is a story many ages old, but which will be freshly told this morning in every tongue under heaven, of how free heathen monarchs once set out together on a long and perilous journey to seek, not riches nor adventures, but a newborn king greater than themselves. On their way from the far east, they crossed the damp, malarious slopes of the Aegean Sea, the precipitous mound heights of Chaldea, sterile desert tracks with neither chart nor compass, guided only by a mysterious light in the heavens. Kepler asserts that this light was caused by a conjunction of the planets Saturn and Jupiter, which for the first time appeared in the year of Rome, 747, as one star for months in the southern heavens, pointing as with a heavenly finger of light to the hills of Bethlehem. Other astronomers declare that while this conjunction had taken place at that time, the wise men were more probably led to the place of the Savior's birth by a comet which traversed the heavens for the space of 70 days. Whether the star in the east was a comet or a special sign set among the clouds by God matters little. It guided these heathens to the stable. It's worthwhile for us to remember, too, that these were not ghosts or shadowy types of mankind crossing the desert, as we are apt to consider all biblical personages, but sincere men in a grouping, ignorant age of the world, searching for a leader and a teacher using the best knowledge that they had to find him, astrology, signs, and superstitions, very likely of every sort. They were so eager that they braved all the slow, dreary risk of the way. They were so sure that they would find the man they sought, that they brought gifts ready in their hands for him, each according to his own character and life. The legend says that Melchior, the smallest of the free, a shrewd but honest ruler brought gold. Another, a larger man and of a joyous disposition, brought incense to burn with gladness before the king of the world, while the third, who was of dark color and had suffered great miseries and was yet grown to a mighty stature, had only fragrant myrrh to lay at his feet, in silence. The star at last brought them to the king. He was neither warrior nor wise man, but newborn babe. He was so far separated from worldly state and usages that he made his bed with the beasts of the field, while creatures higher than man thronged the air to pay him homage. He was akin to man in his extreme want, and that from his first breath. Mary was driven as a pauper from the inn, in her greatest strait. The free kings worshipped the child and went on their way, all that we are told about them further is that God himself directed their journey. Now all of us, men and women, in our streets, shops, and offices, are searching for this unknown leader, just as the free heathen kings did, through solitary desert and mountain ranges, railroads, telegraphy, the hurly-burly of politics and newspapers have not made a whit of difference to the soul of man and his secret need. A New York merchant gropes for the hand to lead him through life in a straight, honorable path and through the darkness beyond, on which newspapers or telegraphy have thrown no ray of light, precisely as did these kings of Chaldea. We have the Savior, it's true. We've covered him with cumbrous church organizations, stately ceremonials. We approach him through music, stained glass, carved stone, aesthetic emotion. Today, let's come straight to the poor stable and the child. He comes close to us, whether we choose it or not, the year round, through little children. There's not been a baby born this year into the coldest-blooded mansion of Murray Hill 
or the vilest seller of the five points, who has not touched some heart in them with a new sense of innocence, of Christ-like love. Now as when he was alive, when he would teach his disciples most directly, he sets a little child in the midst of them. Let us make the children and the poor our companions for this one day of the year, and see if we shall not find some trace of him among them. When we have found him, what gift shall we bring him on his birthday? Money for this church, or that school, or charity? Melchior gave gold, we are told, and did well. Some men have no money to give, but they are so glad to be alive, and have their hearts so full of love to this good and gracious master, that they scatter largesse of kindness and happiness all about them. They are the high priests of Christmas, and we hope every household has one to burn incense for it this happy morning. But there may be some of our readers who have neither money nor joy to give away today, who have brought out of the past year nothing but the remembrance of an open grave or some yet more hopeless pain. So there was one who came to worship with the others, silent and of grave countenance, who had gone through great tribulation. But we are told he was grown of higher stature than his fellows, and when he laid myrrh at the feet of the arbiter of life and death, he was touched, not by the scepter of an avenging judge, but by the loving hand of the divine child. Thank you for joining us today. Remember before you leave to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and remember to like and comment below. And we will see you next time on Americana Archives.